Welcome to Peace Lutheran Church on this second Sunday in Lent, where all people are invited into full participation of the life of the church, regardless of race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, or physical and mental disabilities. I want to issue a special good morning to all of those uh, who are joining us this morning on Zoom. We're glad you're here. And uh, a warm welcome to newcomers. Please introduce yourself to me or to someone else after um, the service so we can get to know your, you better. Uh, we hope that you will worship with us again. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And I'd like to invite a um, council member to come up for announcements. highlight of our announcements because we have many, um, so I'll just go over them um, with you. We have funeral service and a celebration of life for Nicole Gurley, and that's scheduled for Saturday, March 11th at 10 a.m. We're expecting about 100 people in to come to Nicole's services, and we would really appreciate any help we could have with setup, um, serving, and cleanup. Also, if you're willing to provide refreshments such as sandwiches, cookies, um, cheese and crackers, or fruit, um, we have sign-up sheets right out in the narthex and would appreciate any help we could receive with that. <clears throat> On Wednesday evenings in Lent, we are uh, having our second Turning Toward God to Care for Our Common Home on March 8th. This one will focus on two more unheard voices affected by climate change, and we hope you can join us. Um, an Alzheimer's Care Conference is scheduled for Saturday, March 18th from 9 until 2 p.m. at Good Samaritan Las Cruces Village. It's free and a lunch is provided. Um, there are instructions in your announcements on how to sign up and register by email. Lutheran Disaster Response is requesting special donations to assist with recovery from the earthquake in Turkey that affected thousands, uh, killed thousands, and, and affected um, a huge area. Um, and this is an area that has already been in crisis for a long period of time. Um, there are also instructions on how you can donate in your announcements. A small immersion group will be with us from the Lutheran Campus Center in Mankato, Minnesota, and they'll be arriving this evening and staying in the fellowship hall until Friday. We ask that you continue to please sign up for any worship uh, assistance slots. There are many, many tasks that we have to be able to provide a worship service on Sunday and your help with those tasks such as ushering, communion assistance, etc. is very much appreciated. Pastor Lynn has office hours for us on Wednesday 9.30 to 12.30 and on Thursdays from 12.30 till 3.30. You may have noticed we now have our um, offering envelopes provided for the 2023 year. And on the envelope, there is a designation for your offering. If you decide to choose other, please uh, help us out by indicating if that means you're donating toward flowers or disaster relief or how you'd like your offering um, directed. Any prayer requests um, can be included in the prayers of the day. Before the service, you can sign up on the kiosk in the narthex and include any special prayers that you might have. Thank you. Remembering our baptisms, we worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, 
forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ our and Lord. Amen. It's hard walking to the cross with Jesus. It means asking God for help when we come to a crossroads. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. When we truly repent and we heartily believe in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. God, our leader and guide. In the waters of baptism, you bring us to new birth as your children, to live as your children. Strengthen our faith in your promises that by your spirit we may lift up your life to all the world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Good morning. Please read the psalm with me responsively. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? The maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. Behold, the keeper of Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord, the Lord will watch over you going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. The word of the Lord. Good morning, Jeremiah. It's great to see you. I thought today that I might talk about 
houses. Um, I live in a house. Uh, but I don't live alone. I'm really lucky that way. I, I live with my husband, Ron. Um, and, and he loves me and I love him. So that turns our house into a home. Right? Sometimes we live in houses and sometimes we live in apartments and sometimes um, we live in rooms and sometimes we live in shelters. But um, whenever there's love there, we're turning the place that we live into a home. Where do you live, Jeremiah? Okay. Is there anybody in that house who loves you? Yeah, I probably can't remember them all. His Nana and his Mama and his Grandpa and his little big, big brother, little brother, little brother. And did I miss somebody? And your uncle. Okay, we don't want to miss him either. So there are all these people who live in your house that love you and do you love them? So I don't know if you remember what I said, but does that mean that your house has changed into a in a house right now it's called church and this church um, is filled with love and that makes this church in many ways a home and here's the thing that even if we live alone we still can turn the place where we live into a home because we're filled with love and God loves us in our gospel lesson today we're going to read that God so loved the world. And he loved all of us so much that he gave us his son, Jesus, to be our brother. He gave us the Holy Spirit to be our mother. And he is our father. What a wonderful family. What a wonderful family. We all have a family. Even when we live alone, we all have a home here in church and in our own abodes. So let's remember that, for God so loved the world. And let's pray. Can we pray? Okay, here we go. Thank you, God, for places to live, houses, apartments, rooms, shelters, and church. With your love, they all become home. Amen. According to St. John, the third chapter. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Discernment. Discernment. That's one of those big words that nobody knows the meaning of. Right? It sounds kind of churchy, doesn't it? Maybe erudite and certainly pious and holy. It's probably something, you know, that the pastor does. Smart people. Maybe Pope Francis. We're going to discern the way forward. Back in 2013, 115 cardinals discerned that Jorge Mario Bergoglio should be the next pope. And lo and behold, Pope Francis was born. Churches discern which pastors to call into ministry, and pastors discern which church to go to. But if you think that discernment has only to do with churches, you would be wrong. If you think it has to do with God, you would be right. So this morning, I thought it might be helpful to unpack that word and figure out what it has to do with us. Discernment isn't just for holy people, and it isn't just for smart people. But I think the process of discernment can help to make us holy and wise. Webster Dictionary says discernment is the ability to be able to see and understand people, things, or situations clearly and intelligently. The quality of being able to grasp and comprehend what is obscure. The thing is that discernment doesn't usually stand on its own. What good is discernment if you don't do something with it, right? Um, so most often discernment is paired with some kind of decision making. Discernment on the one hand, decision making on the other. The assumption is that we can make good decisions only if we see and we grasp a situation clearly and intelligently. Where discernment in the context of faith comes in, we don't rely just on our senses to see clearly. We don't expect our own foggy eyesight and muddled minds will do the trick. Instead, we look to God for help. We pray. We ask for the long view so we can take the short steps. I'm sure you've all heard the phrase, you can't see the forest for the trees, Sometimes we get so caught up in the middle of everything that's going on around us that it's kind of hard to sort out what is really happening. Most of us probably feel that way when we're looking at the world stage, but I bet that some of us feel that way right here in our own personal lives sometimes. It may get chaotic. It may seem crazy. We might feel like things are hopeless and we are helpless. Who knows what's going to happen next? And the church Off of the dance floor and into the balcony to get the long view of church culture. I'm going to say that over again because it's really great imagery. That you have to get off of the dance floor and into the balcony to get the long view of church culture. 
We're so busy making things happen down here on the dance floor, right? I mean, every one of you is, you know, juggling more than one thing. The dance itself. Or lack of rhythm. Who's sitting out this dance or taking two partners or whatever if we're going to make good decisions for our church as well as our lives and our community and our world? We need to take the time to see the long view and prayerfully ask God to open our eyes and let it in. The psalmist this morning captures this beautifully when he lifts up his eyes to the hills to see God's vision up ahead. Forget about the small stuff because God's got his back. He's drawing the curtains open and turning up the shades so he can see clearly now this wide expanse of the big picture. He told me how discouraged he was about a global issue that justifiably concerned him. All is lost, he said. Our policies are wrong, our commitment is wrong, and we'll never turn this problem around. Big picture. You haven't taken the long view. When you're focusing on the trees, who can see the forest? Who can even catch a glimpse of a future that may look bleak today, but blossom tomorrow? The truth is that every great cause and every worthy desire has great ups and downs before it is finally and fully accomplished. And I'm going to say this again one more time because this is worthy of remembering. Every great cause and every worthy desire has great ups and downs before it's finally and fully accomplished. If your sight is on the depths, that's where you'll stay. Instead, lift up your eyes to see the heights. Practice this morning. <clears throat> I want to encourage you to pray for God's vision not yours, God's. I want to invite you to take the long view, to lift up your eyes to the hills so you can see beyond your nose, to get a sense of it all so the decisions you make are based on your discernment. Now here is one way to get the hang of it. This is going to be really fun. Take out your cell phone. I bet this is the first time you've ever had a pastor ask you to take out your cell phone in worship, right? If you don't have a cell phone, scoot over next to somebody who does so you can see what we're going to do. So open up your camera. Okay. those cell phones. Okay. All right. We got a lot of people with cell phones. Okay. Now what I want you to do is take a picture of maybe your, your arm or your hand, your, you know, or your palm, something that's easy, but a close up. Take a close up picture. I'm doing this with you. If you were going to send this to a stranger, what would they see? <laughs> I can't hear you. What? A knuckle. A knuckle. <laughs> You'd see a knuckle. Okay. Any, anything else? A wedding ring. Ah, oh, nice, nice. Ah, oh, yeah, wrinkles. <laughs> What's that? Your palm, yeah. Okay. Okay, well, you can sh share those with each other after worship, you know? <laughs> those are really beautiful pictures. I, I, I have a few veins and lots of wrinkles, you know? A bunch of cells, um, depending on how close you got. 
You can't really tell very much about who you are if you sent this picture to a stranger. The stranger would know very little about who you are, right? But now let's take another picture, okay? And this time, we're gonna, t I'm gonna suggest that you, uh, you're gonna be embarrassed by this, but we're all doing it, so don't be embarrassed. Um, uh, take a selfie or ask the person next to you to take a picture of yourself, of your face. Okay, here we go. Okay. Oh, we're getting some good pictures here. I see this. <laughs> we should send them all in and post them on the website, you know. This is Peace Lutheran Church. Come and visit, right? <laughs> so what, 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 what will they see in the picture that you just took? I'm not going to embarrass you, but I'm going to say the, the bodacious embodiment of the beautiful you, right? <laughs> That's it. So if you sent both of these pictures to a stranger, they would begin to learn more about who you really are because you took a longer view when you took that selfie. You took a longer view. And not only can other people see more of who you are, but you can see more of who you are. exercise and I know it doesn't feel like prayer to you but I want to use this as an exercise that you can practice to God for the long view this week I encourage you to take your camera and catch some pictures of the long view. Check out the tops of the trees. You know, the wires strung along telephone poles, sunsets, sunrises, the Oregon Mountains, the wild geese flying north, and whatever else you can find on the long view. Then use these pictures in your prayers and let them light up your imagination as you consider the issues that are all around you. Reflect on the things that you haven't been able to see in your life because you've been spending too much time on the things that crowd your view. Through this process, allow yourself the possibility of discernment. Ask for some clarity of mind. Seek a glimpse of God's vision. After exercising this prayer practice for a while, you'll find yourself making decisions that are based on this God-given way of seeing. Good decisions, great decisions, decisions that are led by God and filled with the Spirit, and all because you took the time to discern.
sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. O oh God, you so love your creation. We give thanks for the beauty of the Oregon Mountains, White Sands, and Rio Grande. Guide the work of researchers, scientists, and activists who value your earth and who inspire us to care for our home. Merciful God. O oh God, you so love the world. Uphold leaders who resist tyranny and oppression. Strengthen all who promote peace and harmony and democratic values. We give thanks for organizations like Lutheran World Relief and the Border Servant Corps, among many others. Direct their work to alleviate human suffering and to address its root causes. Merciful God. O oh God, you so love your people. Draw near to all who live with mental illness, depression, and addiction. Accompany them in healing and recovery. Draw near also to all who have chronic illnesses or other conditions without clear paths to the recovery. Hear the cries of those who look to you in their distress. We ask that you would heal Joy, Dee, David, Val, and Adam. We ask that you would guide and protect Liam, Rick, Jan, and Zoe. We also pray for Catherine and Dan, and we give thanks for the birthdays of Ron and Marv. We also pray that you would keep safe all who are traveling, including those who travel for spring break in the coming weeks. Merciful God. O oh God, you so love your church. Raise up leaders who care for your people. Bless lay theologians, seminary and college professors, and all who are called to the ministry of teaching, including Pastor Lynn, and also the future pastor of this church. Sustain them as they form and inspire us for the work of the gospel. Merciful God. O oh God, you so love your saints, as our ancestors in the faith have been a blessing to us. So inspire us by their example of holy living to be a blessing to those who come after us. Today we remember Perpetua, Felicity, and their companions, who were martyrs. Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth, who were renewers of society. And the saints of peace, Mabel and Lois. Merciful God. As we bring to you our needs and hopes, O oh God, we lift up our call committee, our search process, and our future pastor. We trust in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. And now is the time that we put aside our differences and our disagreements, and we share the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace, peace be with you. We're, we come now to that portion of the service where we remember that uh, everything comes from God. And, and what we give is just a portion in return. And so we worship God with our tithes and with our offerings. Offerings to Peace Church can be placed in the tray at the back of the sanctuary or online or through uh, snail mail to the church office.
of good gifts. Receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive. open to all people, no exceptions. This table is not our table, but it is Christ's table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> It is <clears throat> holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal. We praise you and glorify you. We worship and adore you. You formed the earth from chaos. You encircled the globe with air. You created fire for warmth and light. You nourish the lands with water. You molded us in your image and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas, you blessed your people and cherished them as your own. That also we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit. You called us through the life and death of Jesus. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me Again, after he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins as often as you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Together, as the body of Christ, we proclaim, proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Eternal God, send now your Holy Spirit on this meal of bread and wine, on our gifts and on us. Strengthen your universal church 
that it may be the champion of peace and justice in all the world. Restore the earth with your grace that is able to make all things new. Be present with us as we share this meal and throughout all of our lives that we may know you as the Holy One who with Christ and the Holy Spirit lives forever. Amen. Heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. taking communion with us at home over Zoom or those who are taking it with us in the pews using the packets, you may commune with us now as the assistant minister and I commune one another. Christ broken for you. Take and eat. of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Coming forward. This is the body of Christ broken for you, Bob. This is the body of Christ broken for you, Leanne.
holy communion of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep and preserve you each one in body, soul, and spirit into everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus with eyes and of our hearts open to your promise empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and to touch the world with your love amen and may the giver of love christ the resurrection and the life and the holy spirit of rebirth bless you in this lenten journey amen Peace, serve in love. Peace be to God. God.